Hey guys, so kind of a different sort of video today. I don't even know what I'm going to call this. I have done videos in the past about how to fix cream products that are too dry for you to use. And um, even though I already have a couple of videos like that on my channel, I've been making these videos for years and years and years. I have like, I'm getting close to 2,000 videos on YouTube, which is a lot of videos. So I have a lot of subscribers now that I didn't have back then. So I'm going to talk to you today about what to do when you have a product that you can't use. Don't throw it out. You can fix it. Uh, the product specifically that I'm going to show you is, did any of you buy the Katie Cat Pearl Shadow and Highlighter by CoverGirl? It's a beautiful product, but the consistency is horrible. I mean, it is so dry and stiff that you can't do anything with it. So I tried to fix mine this morning, and I have it on, and it is a gorgeous face highlighter. And um, it can also be used as a cream eyeshadow. I didn't use it that way today, but it can be used that way. And this, this is what I'm talking about here. It looks like that. So I tried to fix it, and I'm still not happy with the consistency. I mean, when I used it today, it was very, very difficult to blend, and I just had a really tough time. So this is what it looked like after I tried to fix it. Now, I'm going to fix it again with you on camera and um, show you how I do that. And... The reason why it's still not the consistency that I want it to be is because when you do something like this, you have to go a little bit at a time because if you put too much, if you add too much product in there, you could ruin it completely. So I put a little bit of product in there and then I wait and uh, give it a chance to kind of set up and see how it goes. So. I'm still not happy with it. It's 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 too dry, it's too stiff. You just can't cannot work with this. So I'm gonna show you a couple different options for what you can use to fix a product like this. Because you can do this with any any cream eyeshadow, any cream highlighter, anything you have that is just too dry to work with. What I used today was glycerin. Glycerin is an emollient that you can buy at drugstores. It is not expensive. It's an ingredient that most cosmetics companies use in one capacity or another. And really the only thing, the only purpose for it is to add moisture to a product. It mixes well with other ingredients. Like I said, it's not expensive. If you can't find it at the drugstore that you shop at, ask the pharmacist if they carry it. And if they do, where can you find it in the store? Um, I suppose it's possible that some drugstores don't carry it, but most do. You should be able to find this in pretty much any pharmacy or drugstore. Another option is fractionated coconut oil. Now what that is, is it's coconut oil that has been altered. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know the specifics of it. If you want to look, look it up, you can Google fractionated coconut oil. And the reason why this would be my second choice is um, the, the label fell off because I've had it for so long. The reason why this would be my second choice is because it's a little harder to find. They don't sell this at drugstores. I got this at a business where I live that sells a bunch of random things like they have incense, they have um, things to make your own perfume, um, they have uh, perfume oils in concentrated form, they have um, statues for your yard, <laughs> they have all kinds of, it, it's kind of an eclectic mix of items. So it's a local business, it's a small local business. So I don't know where to recommend for you to get this, but again, if you Google it, I'm sure that um, you can either buy it online or you can find 
a business near you that probably sells it. So that's fractionated coconut oil. And of course, somebody out there is thinking, well, why can't I just use regular coconut oil? Because it isn't going to blend the same way with what you're mixing it with. And um, I think that this has been altered in such a way that it will not require you to add um, preservatives or anything like that because co coconut oil in its natural state might start to break down or expire in some way because it's like a fresh healthy ingredient that you can ingest. This is not something that you want to ingest or use in your food. It's been altered to use with cosmetics. The original purpose for this, why I bought it, was um, I was making my own perfume. So you can buy this and you can add this to a few drops of essential oils and make your own perfume. So that way you have more than one purpose for it if you decide to go this route. Well, I've already used the glycerin this morning, so I'm going to continue along that path. So what I usually do is I just take some and pour it in the cap. And this is a very thick substance. And then I just pour a little bit into the jar. Go, like I said, go on the lesser side. So I'm just going to pour a few drops in there. That was probably, I mean, you can't count the drops because the product is so thick. But that was probably like five or six drops. Pour what's left in the cap back into the container. Have something, a uh, makeup wipe or something handy because it's going to leak down the side of the, bo the bottle a little bit and you don't want to make a mess because this is a really heavy duty concentrated moisturizer. Okay, so once you've got the product in the jar, you're going to need something to stir it with. I recommend something metal. This is one of those little spatula things that come with Z palettes when you buy them. The reason why you want to use something metal is if you use something like a toothpick that's wooden, it's possible that the toothpick could splinter and you could get a splinter of wood in your product and you definitely don't want to do that, especially if you're going to use this as an eyeshadow. So use something that's not going to fall apart. If you don't have one of these metal spatulas, you could just take a utensil from the kitchen, like a fork or a spoon, and just use the flip side of it and use that to stir your product and then just clean it really well afterwards. So it doesn't really matter which side you use. I'm going to use the pointy side. And then I'm just going to really work that product. Work the glycerin into my jar of product here. And just keep stirring it up really well. And this consistency is still so, so thick. Really, I should have returned this product once I knew that I didn't like the texture of it, but it's so pretty when it's on. I mean, I really like this as a face highlighter and um, so I didn't return it when I should have. So I'm just going to keep on stirring that and stirring that and then I'm going to let it set up for probably half an hour and go back and look at it again and decide if it needs more or not. You've got to do this in stages because like I said if you put too much in there's no going back from that. There's no way you can thicken it back up again. So just keep doing that until it gets to be the consistency that you want it to be. And um, I guess that's it for that. And I just wanted to mention that I was going to do a tutorial or a get ready with me on this eye look that I have on today. And then for whatever reason, I just kept on doing my makeup and didn't film it. But I just want to briefly tell you what I used because of yesterday's video, if you saw that. I used, for my transition shade, I used the Maybelline 
City Mini palette in Mad About Town. I think that I'm going to be using this transition shade for most of my makeup looks. This is the most perfect shadow for a transition shade from my skin that I have ever come across. So that's what I used as my transition shade. This is a Walgreens exclusive, by the way. And then I used the Maybelline City Mini Palette in Chill Brunch Neutrals. I love this. I love this more than the Rooftop Bronzes one that I used in yesterday's video. Um, this is gorgeous. And I think it's way more complimentary for my skin tone because it's, you know, it's cooler. So it looks better on me than those warm colors did. So I basically just used that as my brow bone highlight. And then I used that transition shade that I just showed you. I used this color in the crease. This is like um, a beautiful mauve shade. And then I put this on my lid. And I'm going to say that that's a taupe. This is a glittery taupe. And this is more of like a satin finish, the mauve. And then I use this beautiful plum, purpley plum shade. I uh, blended that into my eyeliner. I used uh, Marc Jacobs Earthquake, which is a, a dark brown. So I just blended that into the eyeliner. And that's what I have on my eyes. And I popped those Kiss Lashes on again because I enjoyed how they looked so much yesterday. I'm going to have to get some more. I think they sell those in a multi-pack at Walmart, so I think I'm going to get a multi-pack of these Kiss Lashes. I really like them. They seem to fit my eyes really well. A lot of times when I buy lashes, I have to cut them a little bit, and that never goes well. If you have to cut your lashes, sometimes, you know, you cut a little more off one than the other, and then they don't match, and... So these just seem to fit my eyes perfect so that I don't have to cut them. So really enjoying those. And then on my lips, I just put um, one of the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink Liquid Lipsticks. And this one is in the shade number 10, which is Dreamer. And this is just a pink, a light pink. And um, I figured that would pair up nicely with the cooler eye colors that I used. If you want to see any of the other products that I use, they'll always be in the description box, the full list of things that I used. And um, so that's it, you guys. I just figured I would mention that because I'm sure that some of you bought that Katie Cat Pearl eyeshadow and you probably don't like the consistency of it either. A lot of you probably threw it out by now, but um, yeah, you can, you can fix things like that if you want to. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to say, oh, can I use this? Can I use that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a scientist, and I don't make makeup for a living. I don't own a cosmetics company, but I know that in the past I've used glycerin or fractionated coconut oil, and those things work well for me. But yeah, I'm afraid if you used coconut oil, just regular coconut oil or olive oil or something like that, I don't know if the product would go bad. Um, so I don't know. I mean, you can try it if you want to, but if it starts developing bacteria and that could be a dangerous situation because you don't want to get an eye infection or anything like that. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. So that's it for today. You guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Bye.